So for our video this week, we wanted to give an update on everything that Andrea went through with the surgery. We kind of alluded to it, talked a little bit about it, but we didn't get into much detail or even any detail really. <laughs> I don't remember what all we said, but it wasn't much. So we're, we thought we'd give everybody an update and kind of just tell the whole story of what happened. started at our family reunion. All of Barrett's family was here and we had a family reunion. One of the days we rented a bouncy house for the kids and in the afternoon we decided to have all the adults get in the bouncy house and play around for a little bit. We kicked all the kids out and bounced around and had a fun time, shoved each other around a bunch. Didn't think much of it. The next day we had a day at our local lake and just played at the beach and I woke up really sore in my low back and my glute area I guess and uh, just really sore and stiff and different feeling than, I, than usual sore muscles and I kind of asked other people like are you really sore from that bouncy house and a few of the people said yeah I'm a little sore but so I didn't think too much of it and we finished out our reunion and then every day just got a little bit worse for about a week uh, like the next day I was a little bit more sore and I kept I was started having some weakness down my legs like if I would get out of, get stand up then I would feel really weak like I couldn't keep walking um, almost muscle spasms, I guess. Dude, that's all you ever told me was muscle spasms. Yeah, it was like, I just felt like things were spasming and a lot of pain in my low back. Um, and then either the next day or the couple other, the couple days after I started getting terrible migraines. I've never had a migraine in my life. And it wasn't until I started paying attention to the symptoms I was having that I realized it was a migraine because it was a terrible headache and I had all of the I had some nausea and the sensitivity to light and sound and just was pretty miserable so we finally went into the local clinic um, got some medicine for migraines and I still was having this really bad low back pain and it almost felt like in my Toxic. Like I kept having these spasms and I was like, I think I broke something. Like I think I broke, not, not my tailbone. Just your sacrum. Yeah. Your I thought I broke something because it just felt off. Something was weird and I couldn't figure out. Anyway, long story short, this went on for about a week and I just kept getting worse every day. And finally, um, on a Saturday, Barrett's parents came over to help us because I'd been in bed for a week. Well, back up a little bit. Oh. Being a physical therapist, I was trying to figure out what was going on with her, trying to help her, treat her, you know, do some tests and stuff to figure out what it was. And everything I did that should make her feel better made her worse. Didn't matter what I did, anything I did that touched her made her worse. And so I was kind of in the back of my head thinking something weird, like something serious is going on, but also was trying to deny the fact that something serious was going on. And so, yeah, that led up to Saturday. Right. That's, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because we were completely baffled, just could not figure out what's going on. So yeah, then that Saturday, his parents were over. I had been in bed. It was lunchtime and I decided to get out of bed. I was hungry and tried to make my way down the hall and I started getting really dizzy. That was the other thing. I kept having dizzy spells anytime I would get up. Um, 
started feeling really dizzy, walked over to the counter, asked for something, and then thankfully Barrett was right there, and I just said, I need to sit down. So I was trying to sit in a seat, but then it was, my back hurt so bad I couldn't sit. And so I tried to sit down because I was feeling dizzy, but then my back hurt when I sat, so I couldn't sit, I stood back up, and then I, I could, like it was getting dark, I knew I was gonna pass out. So thankfully he was standing right there and I just turned and grabbed him and I, then I was gone. Just totally passed out. So yeah, she just went limp in my arms, so I just had her and she kind of just, arms over head, completely passed out, <laughs> making weird noises. And so I just laid her on the ground and elevated her feet and then she came to pretty quick and immediately just said, I can't lay on my back because that's how I had her. So we rolled her onto her side and I had one of the kids come over and just said, stay with her. And I disappeared, didn't I? Yeah, where'd you go? <laughs> I went to go get the car ready because we were going to the emergency room. As soon as she passed out, I knew we were going and so I didn't waste any time. I just had to make sure she was comfortable, I had somebody sit with her for a second, and then I went and got the car ready. So, continue. So thankfully his parents were already there, so we just took off, went to the hospital. I, it was really uncomfortable ride for me because my back pain was so bad. I couldn't sit, and so... So she laid down in the yeah, back seat the whole time. He laid me in the back seat, and I had been passed out, and so uncomfortable ride the whole way there and got to the hospital and he went in to the ER and of course this is during COVID so we didn't even know if he was going to be able to come in with me um, so he went in just told him what was going on and so a nurse came out with him and she said well can you get out of the car well <laughs> before that this was August was yeah. it the end of August no it was still July was it, it was July, July 25th, yeah. I remember. So, July 25th. summer, so it was hot in the car. Even with the AC going, it was hot. The sun was shining through, so I was kind of hot. I got out, and the first thing they did when I walked in the hospital is I took my temperature and immediately told me to leave because it was over 100 degrees. And I was like, um, but I have my wife in the car that's, like, dying right now. Can somebody come look at her? Like, I know I don't have a fever, I'm just hot. And so I went outside in the shade for a minute, and then I came back in, I took my temperature again, and it was fine. And then that's when they finally like started to listen to me, and yeah, I said, I don't think she can walk in because she keeps passing out, and she can't move. We need to get her in, you know, into a room to get her checked out, and they basically said, we have no way to get her in here unless she can walk. And I said, find a way. So they went off and they just got a wheelchair, didn't they? Yeah. Which I don't know why they wouldn't offer a wheelchair in the first place, because... I don't know. Anyway, so the nurse came to the car and basically like pulled me out of the back seat. <laughs> no, I was able to get out and I was okay then. was able to walk a little bit. They got, it, got us in there. Anyway, so I don't remember what time that was. It was like it's about two o'clock. Two o'clock. We, we spent got there. I think it was about two o'clock. The entire rest of the day in the ER, doing test after test after test, because my symptoms were so weird. I was having the crazy migraines. Yeah, crazy Ten migraines hours. plus all of the weird back spasming and shooting down my legs and leg weakness and. So the ER doctor was really great at listening to us and of course we said he's a physical therapist, he's been doing tests on me on all week, we just cannot figure out what's going on. So he was really great to listen to us. And the one thing that, I mean after I kind of explained what I did, he says, well what do you think is going on? And I said, I don't know, but the things I would like to rule out would be meningitis and a tumor. And he said, let's start with the easy one first which was meningitis. So they did a spinal tap. It's funny because I've had six children and never had an epidural and I I am fine with needles except for a needle going in my spine. <laughs> I donate blood all the time, like needles don't bother me except for that one. 
so I he was like, you've had an epidural before, right? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like needles in my spine. And he was like, well, you can refuse it if you want, but it's going to be the quickest way to figure out what's going on here. So of course I agreed to it, and it was not nearly as bad as I expected it to be. So I survived that. <laughs> So they took the spinal fluid, there was a little bit of, I guess it was blood. Yeah. There's a little bit of blood in the spinal fluid. So he said, okay, this is a good start. This is gonna help us figure out what's going on. Anyway, long story short, I ended up getting like three CAT scans, five MRIs, plus blood tests, the spinal tap, it was a crazy day. The worst part is they wouldn't let me eat anything the entire day because for some reason eating was going to mess up their testing. I don't know. Well, I think they were worried that you might have to go to surgery. Oh. And so they didn't want to So they wouldn't that. let me eat anything. I think they finally brought me a drink after we'd been there like six hours or something. I was but like, can I have some water at least? You hadn't had anything prior to that either. I ate a sandwich well, on the way there. did you eat a sandwich on the way there? Okay. <laughs> At least you got that. But yeah, I was starving and basically just lying in this bed at the hospital all day. Well, in and out of that bed because we had to do so much testing. Anyway, it was miserable. And they finally went to MRIs when they didn't find anything on CAT scans. I did two and a half hours straight of MRIs. That is the most miserable thing I have done in a long time. <laughs> It was awful because I already had back pain and I had to lie flat on my back and not move. I mean, they would bring me in and out in between each one, but still, just lying there for two and a half hours was... They at least gave you a painkiller before, didn't no. they? No. They didn't give you they anything did, before? No, they didn't give me anything. Left. I know they gave us pills when you left, yeah. but... They did not give me anything while we were in the ER. So, of course, because I'd been having all of the migraines and brain stuff, they started from the brain and went down. And finally, it was like 11.30 at night. We already had switched to another ER doctor. He came in and said, we finally found your problem. You have a tumor on your spine. And it's down on L1 and L2. Alright? Oh, yeah. yeah. L1, L2. And... We don't know much about it. Here is the surgeon in Idaho Falls, and you can call him Monday morning. <laughs> Have a nice and, weekend. Yeah. And then he was out the door. <laughs> oh, he gave me some pain medication. Well, I at least asked, asked him what it was. Yeah. What do you call it? Uh, Mysopapillary appendemoma. Mouthful. So we at least had something to Google. Which was right. probably worse than not having anything because when you look at the pictures, they're terrible. But we knew it wasn't that bad, so. But it, yeah. So we at least had a diagnosis, but it was not, like, they didn't tell us anything about it. They just said, go see this surgeon. See you later. Here's some pills. Go home. Yeah. So it was good. We got on, I mean, at least got on some pain meds and that helped me get through the weekend. We called the surgeon first thing Monday morning, um, and there were a lot of people praying for us, and their prayers came through because they had a cancellation. They were able to get me scheduled for surgery August 3rd, and... Um, Is that the same week? That we it was the next Monday. The next Monday. So it was a week after that we'd first spoken to the surgeon. We we had an office visit with him before and set everything up, and um, he was amazing. He actually had just done that surgery on another lady like a month before, so it was fresh in his mind. They even already had all the insurance codes pulled up. Everything was ready for us, so that was kind of a miracle. Um, yeah, so basically just survived the next week on pain medicine getting through the week and uh, the the surgeon's theory on why I was getting migraines is that so this this tumor was actually a slow-growing tumor 
and so it could have been there for years and we just didn't know because I wasn't having any symptoms. Um, and so his theory is that when I bounced around in that bounce house, it put enough pressure on it to just irritate it a little bit and cause some blood to go into my spinal cord and um, that was going up to my brain and causing the migraines. That's his only theory because we won't ever really know. But the migraines stopped as soon as this, I had my surgery. So <laughs> I'm assuming he was right. <laughs> They went through that full week after you saw him the first time, right? You know, mm, once I got on the pain meds, I was okay you didn't with as the much. yeah, with the migraines. They weren't nearly as bad. Um, so yeah, I had surgery. Everything went well, except for a slight allergic reaction when I was waking up from anesthesia, <laughs> body shakes and crazy. But yeah, so I'm. <laughs> waiting in the surgery waiting room, whatever they call that place. And they told me that she was done and that she was, they were just gonna take her back to the room. And they called me soon and let me know what room she was in. And like an hour later, I'm like, what's going on? And finally I get another call and they're like, we're still not taking her to her room yet. She's having a hard time. I think they said she's having a hard time waking up or something like that. <laughs> I wasn't having a hard time waking up. <laughs> Maybe they said a hard time with waking up. I don't remember what it was, but... <laughs> That's the funniest part of the story, actually. <laughs> because I woke up, and I, like, I was conscious, but not enough to open my eyes. So I still had my eyes closed, but my body was just shaking, like, uncontrollably shaking. So I had some allergic reaction, but there was a nurse right there, and I just remembered calling, just talking to him. Get stop shaking. <laughs> and he was kind and he's like, I know, I know, I've got I'm putting some medicine in your IV. You're gonna feel better in just a minute. And my next comment was, Do I have a catheter? <laughs> and he was like, Yes, you just got out of surgery, you have a catheter in, and I was like, it hurts. <laughs> so I'm sure those guys have some entertaining stories of people yeah. waking up from surgery but yeah so crazy shaking and anyway eventually got up to my room and I had to lie flat on my back for 24 hours the first day in the hospital so that was I guess it was rough but not really I mean I'd just gone through surgery, so I was tired, I was on pain meds, so Same. it wasn't that big of a deal to just lie there. Some of the pain meds you had were making you pretty sleepy yeah. anyway, so... And I had a catheter in, so I didn't have to get up. That was actually the worst part. I hated the catheter. <laughs> it was so uncomfortable. And so the next day, they were like, Okay, we can get your catheter out, we want to get you up and moving. And I was like, thank you, please take it out. But then it was even worse, because then I had to move my back. <laughs> Where lying flat, I didn't have to move, so it didn't hurt that much. Well, back up a little bit again. So part of the surgery, they had to take part oh. of her vertebrae off. And so it wasn't like just a small surgery. They had to cut an incision like this long, and then they took part of a vertebrae off, and then went into her spinal, next to her spinal cord, and pulled the tumor out and then they, there's no way they can put that piece of vertebrae back on, so she just has to heal around that and then stitch everything up. So it was a pretty major surgery, um, so moving was not fun after that. No, it wasn't. So, um, but yeah, surgery went well. He said, um, so the tumor was below the actual spinal column. It was still in the, sorry, below the actual spinal cord, it was still in the spinal column um, but it wasn't stuck I think it had one nerve that it was sort of um, yeah he said there was one nerve that it was kind of sort of stuck on stuck but it's to. not like it was grown into it and so once he just gently detached that one nerve the rest of the tumor just kind of rolled out so it could have been so much worse and I'm so thankful that I jumped in a bouncy house <laughs> <laughs> because the timing of everything was perfect. It was summertime, my kids were out of school. Um, 
There are so many ways that this could have gone yeah. 10 times worse. It had it been longer, it could have attached to nerves more, and she could have ended up with causing nerve damage. Nerve, I mean, possible paralysis. Right. We have no there idea. There were so many things. Could have gone to, so. So we were, once again, like I said, we had so many friends and family praying for us, and so I, it was a um, much better experience than it could have been. So, um, anyway, so yes. Uh, Post-surgery, I stayed in the hospital two days on lots of pain meds, just trying to um, get used to moving around again, using the bathroom. Uh, that was the worst part. They made me have a bowel movement before I left, and for some reason, the doctor didn't want to just give me an enema, so they just kept pumping laxatives. <laughs> so, it was awful. But, so yeah. Like, a full day was just me trying to have a bowel movement so I could leave the hospital. <laughs> and finally made it, and we finally were able to leave, and we had wonderful friends and family that came and stayed with our kids, helped bring us meals, um, did everything so that Barrett could work and that I didn't have to do anything. So I basically stayed in bed for about a week, and then every day just got up a little bit more and recovered quickly. I mean, it's, now it just seems like a bad nightmare. Like it's, it's been three months and I forget most of the time that I had major back surgery. Like I. So the only real I mean, complication, real difficulty that we've had was initially they had, when they sent the tumor to pathology to see what what kind it was, if it was cancer or not, and the first one said no, they sent it to a second one to confirm and they said possibly, and so then they had to send it to a third one, well we had to meet with an oncologist, yeah. and they reviewed it and they said we don't think it is, but we're going to send it to the National Institute of Health to see what they think, so they got the tumor, they looked at it and said no, we don't think it is either, so we got three out of four that said no, it's not cancerous, and so that's what we're sticking with, I guess. Right. <laughs> they did some. They did some review uh, MRIs after surgery as well, just for of my whole spine to make sure that there were no lingering cancer cells, if there had been. Um, anyway, so they did, they really triple checked everything to make sure that this was really gone and there was nothing going to cause me any more effects. Um, there is a slight risk of occurrence. I guess it's reoccurrence. I guess it's more common in children. If children have a tumor such as this, it is common for it to return. But um, so I will have to have more MRIs at the year mark and go back to see the surgeon just to confirm. And then he said, if there's nothing there at that point, we'll just call you cured. So I guess <laughs> we just hope until then that I'm cured. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I have a little bit of lingering soreness and just muscle weakness from where that vertebrae had to be removed and the muscles have kind of had to relearn where to go there. Um, but as you can see in my past videos, I'm moving logs and hauling hay and it hasn't slowed me down. So, so you had to take basically the first six weeks. Yeah. Week. We tried to have you do nothing, but you still did way more than you should. But yeah, so she took about six weeks off, and then after that, just kind of went back to normal life and just slowly worked into it. So she's been doing great. I'm lucky to have a live-in therapist, so. Better to work. <laughs> really, it's more like he's trying to slow me down. Yeah. <laughs> Here's some exercise. Go move some hay for me. <laughs> Go feed the yeah. calves. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's that's our update. She's doing great. We don't have any problems now. Hopefully, we won't have any down the road with it either. So we're just going forward, just like life is normal. Just chalk it up to a bad dream. Yeah, a bad dream with a lot of medical bills. Yeah, <laughs> an expensive bad dream. But anyway, we will catch you guys next time with more actual farm stuff. We'll see you later.
We got nothing more to say. I guess I could show off my scar. Ooh, you catch me like a leaf falling from a tree. Put pictures here. Scar. We'll probably put the pictures for us. We'll probably see them later. My heart is on the table cause you're my everything I do Oh! We're gonna be in there. We're gonna I gotcha. You're gonna add them in. We're adding these in. Swimming around, I know it's true. You go back, they were added in. The way you make me feel is so good, baby. I didn't hold good, them up to the camera. I just edited them in there. So good, so good. Anyway, um, that's our update.